Hello and welcome to the instructional demonstration video for the 2016 Bursner Nexo T740 Sovereign. So I'll walk you around the outside and show you those controls and then we'll move on to the inside. So starting with the cab, uh, to open the cab on these, the bonnet release catch is just here on that side of the, uh, of the dashboard. Just while we're here, I'll show you the blinds. Uh, so these are the night blinds for the cab, um, for the windscreen and the side windows. So they draw across like that with a magnetic strip that holds them in place on that corner. So you pinch these two together and then draw it across. The same on the side and then the same on the opposing side and they've got a magnetic strip that joins the two together to keep them in place. Um, so that's your night blinds. Just while we're here, um, there's a, there's, this model uh, looks like it's been fitted with air suspension on the rear axle. What this does is it strengthens the rear axle if you've got a lot of uh, heavy weight in the storage area at the back. Um, you can um, pump that up just with a compressor like you would if you were uh, filling your tyre full of air. Just fill it up there and it gives you a pressure gauge there so that pressure gauge you just need to put a, a relevant pressure in that relevant to, to the load that you're carrying in the, in the back and then you release the pressure as you would on a tyre valve by pushing in the uh, the little tab on the inside of the valve there. Just while we're here on the um, on this pillar here is the uh, tyre pressures you're probably better referring to the actual tyre themselves because some of them use specialist um, camper tyres um, and also we've got the uh, the weight plate uh, which shows the uh, towing capacity and the maximum uh, load which is just there your fuel filler is just on this pillar again uh, you need your key for that uh, so that's where you fill your diesel fuel for the engine okay so underneath the bonnet then you've got your uh, washer fluid fill coolant uh, brake fluid your oil goes in here and then your dipstick's just there to check your oil levels um, if you ever need to jump start the vehicle, there's a little tab which you'll need a key to release, just bear with me a second. So what you do is you put your key into that little tab there and then it reveals a metallic plate that you put your jump terminal onto, so that's your positive, you put your red onto there, and then your negative, your earth onto there, your black tab, and that uh, allows you to jump start the vehicle or jump start somebody else's vehicle. So what I'll do is I'll do a full circle of the vehicle and the controls on the outside. So as we're walking down the passenger side here, the first locker we come to is the service locker, uh, what's referred to as the service locker. So from the from the left to the right, we've got here, um, this is your fresh water tank. Uh, it's missing its cap, but I'll get you one of those um, on uh, before, before you collect. Um, so you just basically fill the water tank with a hose pipe into there until it literally pours out. Um, if you ever need to uh, get into the tank, there's an inspection hatch here. Um, shouldn't ever really need to do that, but you can gain access to clean it uh, through that there. To drain down the fresh water tank, and it is important that you do so, uh, particularly in cold weather conditions, if water is allowed to freeze in here, it could expand and then it could crack the tank. You do so by turning this valve here to the left. Now there's two positions on this. You've got a 120 litre tank. It'll allow you to drain it down to 20 litres, um, which is sort of operational levels. So. Um, you can carry 20 litres of water, which is 20 kilograms, and then you can calculate your weights uh, more accurately, and you're not having to carry it around 120 kilos of water. So you do that by turning it left, you'll feel it click, and if you turn it further again left, then it will drain down completely. So the first click is uh, draining it down to 20 litres, next one um, completely down to uh, zero. There's an indication inside to tell you uh, on the... Um, control panel what your water levels are at you can actually see because it's a bit of a clear tank but um, uh, there's an indication inside this is where your mains electric comes into so you'll need a cable um, so I've just got one here uh, that we use for display you put your little uh, in this little cut out there your cable goes into that 
this would normally have a lid on it this was just for display purposes it's been damaged so you, you, you lift the lid up and it sits like that and then you push so this, this my, imagine my, fi my fingers the lid you push the uh, cable onto the mains receptacle there and that's that's mains coming into the vehicle for you uh, in the locker here we have two drain down valves the first one I'll just remove this for ease of access first one is the boiler drain so that will drain all the water out of the uh, boiler which contains 10 litres of water uh, you can do this manually or it's also thermostatic so it'll, it'll sense that the temperature is dropping when it gets to 6 degrees and the boiler isn't switched on it will drop all the water out of the boiler automatically to protect the boiler um, from frost damage so that is open to manually close it you turn that diamond shaped dial around to that position and push that button in at the bottom there so that's the operational position so if you come back to this and it's been really cold or your battery goes flat it will automatically drop all the water out of the boiler for, uh, boiler for safety reasons and um, that little yellow tab there um, gets rid of the excess water in the pipe work so that is in the operational and closed position if you pull it up like that that is open you can see there's water just in the residual pipes the residual water in the pipes there uh, so to get this operational and working uh, ready to ready to be filled it needs to look like that in the horizontal position these pipes here are just heating that is directed onto the pipe work to stop uh, stop those from freezing this key here which I'll put back in the cutlery drawer of the vehicle is to drain down the wastewater tank. So everything that goes down the tap and down the shower ends up in a tank which is underneath the vehicle, which is just just there. Um, and that's the uh, pipe that the wastewater would uh, come out from. And this key here goes onto the end of that. And then you turn it left uh, to drain it and then right to close the valve it's also been closed when they've done, been doing the pre-delivery inspections so it's important you don't lose that, that that tool i mean you can get players on the end of it but uh, that's that's what that tool is for next to the service locker here we have a uh, vent or a chimney for the boiler uh, whenever the boiler has been used on gas it, it will need to vent off its uh, exhaust um, so that's what that is in cold weather you'll see steam rising from that it's nothing to worry about it's just the boiler venting off as you would see on a domestic boiler so as we work our way towards the back you've got the gas locker just open this up we have the gas locker here <clears throat> so this has got a gas bottle in it a refillable gas bottle and uh, to turn the gas on you turn that tap anti-clockwise to close it you're turning it clockwise don't travel with the gas switched on on this model it doesn't have a, a valve that'll uh, sense an impact so I would recommend that you switch uh, switch the gas off there's an indication to tell you what level your gas is at there um, and your regulator is just housed there but that should uh, really just look after itself to fill the gas and um, it's this here so when you fill up when you come to your uh, fueling station and um, you just literally screw uh, you fill it into there and fill it it won't overfill it will only um, fill to 80% so it's there 80% protected and then that valve will show you full but it, it, it's actually only 80% full so moving around the back of the vehicle we've got the reverse camera when you select reverse that will automatically engage onto the monitor uh, that's uh, in the well the radio in the radio position just make sure that's kept uh, clean uh, if you get water a build up of water on there it can distort the vision but um, not much you can do about that but uh, I think there's actually two positions on that yeah, there's two lenses so uh, that's what that is on the, on the back panel there so on the driver's side of the vehicle then we've got the garage and we've got the cushions that make up the bed and um, 
I'll have a go at showing you, showing you those. Uh, I know when this customer originally bought this vehicle, we did go through how the bed arrangement uh, was set up. Uh, you've got your carpets in there. The box for the uh, optional Wi-Fi that we fitted for this particular customer. <clears throat> you've got further drain down valves here. Um, so again, exactly the same position as, uh, same situation as in the service locker. They are closed. It, what this is doing is draining off the excess water in the pipe work so you can imagine if water's left in there over winter um, it, 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 if it turns to ice it will expand and it can't it can't go anywhere it'll it could crack the pipe so it's very important that they are drained down for winter use so again pointing upwards like that it's open and safe for winter pointing downwards like that it's closed um, and the vehicle is ready for operation you won't obviously if these are up you won't get any water out your taps because it's just pumping it onto the onto the floor because you've opened up this tap which is what it is effectively just a tap you've got heat vent into the garage as well and that just closes to protect those valves these tie down points you just simply unscrew them and then they'll slide along and then to tighten them back into position you just give it a quarter turn to the right and then that's those back in position just on the inside there that's the tool kit um, it does have an inflation kit which it, it doesn't have a spare wheel but you, they do give you a tool kit if you ever need to take the wheel off but um, it's got an inflation kit which is in the passenger side door pocket got the winder for the awning there and there is a separate video on how to use awnings uh, which I'll uh, include on the email to uh, to you when I send this video across so moving on then we have here an external socket you will actually need an adapter for that um, it's the continental style uh, adapter that's fitted to this so imagine when you're going on holiday you take those adapters with you that turn two pin into three pin uh, UK adapters that's the adapter you'll need and that gives you a main supply to the outside of your vehicle this is a 12 volt supply to the outside of your vehicle again you will need an adapter for that these are the continental style adapters um, we do have those here but uh, I can advise you on, on which ones you require for those uh, and that's the same for the 12 volt appliances inside uh, 12 volt uh, outlets for the inside of the vehicle next to that we have the external shower point that's an option on this um, somewhere in the vehicle I've, I've just not got that to hand there'll be a hose that goes into this and you simply just push it into there um, and then you've got a hose that comes off with a head a shower head on the end of it with a trigger and then you can wash uh, dirty wellies or dog owners tend to favor this option and then you've just got your tap for hot that way and then cold the other way and that switches the pump on that little switch there to release it you just push that collar in and then that releases the hose off the end underneath that we have the toilet cassette and there's an indication inside to tell you when that's uh, needs emptying but this is where all the toilet waste goes so to empty this you lift up that handle there slide this full cassette out grab it on top there on the handle so to empty it push that nozzle forward unscrew the cap on the end and then just tip it up and pour the waste away you, know, you want to tip it upside down like that so obviously the the waste comes out of the bottom there as you're doing so press this button in it lets air in as the liquid is coming out and this requires chemical so to put the chemical into this it's the blue chemical or the green if you want to use um, the biodegradable stuff you slide that forward and then release this catch here and it opens up the blade and that allows you to pour the chemical into there so when, you, when you've emptied it fill it up with water swill it round empty it again then put a little bit of water in the bottom and the required amount of chemical into that there close that back up make sure that's pointing straight otherwise you won't get the, the cassette back in and close that back up uh, put your nozzle back in and you're good to go again these are transportable with wheels so they've got a wheel on the bottom you just pull that handle out and it allows you to wheel it over to the disposal point 
So next to that we have an external barbecue point, so that taps into the gas supply that we showed you around the other side of the vehicle. And um, to tag onto this, you just pull the end, protective nozzle off the end, and then again, sim very similar fitting to the shower. There's a there's a there's a little metal piece that you will require um, that goes into that, and then on the other end of that metal piece, there's like a a push fit that you push your tubing onto that would then go off to your uh, barbecue or your heater for outside and then again to release that you just push that collar uh, that way and it release the, the metal tube that, that, that goes into there to switch it on uh, you turn that round and then you've got your gas supply you need the bayonet fitting in in the end of there to switch that on don't try and force that on without the bayonet fitting on so that's your external gas and for gas gas appliances outside this is just vents for the fridge so it draws cool air in at the bottom expels it at the top there so just make sure they're kept free of debris okay so now that we're in the vehicle then uh, to spin the seats around uh, so the captain's chairs on this you just pull that nozzle like that and that allows you to spin the chair around you might need to go forwards and backwards in this sort of motion to get the uh, seat to go all the way around because sometimes it'll catch on the door handle. Um, okay, so the bed the bed arrangement I will I'll do that last. So as we're working back towards the back of the vehicle here now, um, basically what happens is the table drops down, and uh, you remove this bottom leg, and the table drops down and sits on that grey rail there. And that bridges the gap between this bit and then there's, there's a, the cushions that are in the garage bridge this gap here uh, this particular customer we went through that when when they were buying the vehicle but I'll, I'll set it up at the very end of the video just one thing to note that on on these burstners the um, fuse box and charger unit is just underneath the passengers seat there and on the front of that panel there's a bank of 12 volt fuses so if there's ever an issue with a 12 volt appliance and that's the first place to to look really because that's where the where the fuses are, are located okay so we're on to uh, uh, the main control panel here um, fairly simple controls so the, these are uh, indicating your battery conditions so you've got your engine battery and that needle shot over there and um, we're plugged in so it's showing a a high reading so that's your engine battery that's your leisure battery again we're plugged in so it's shot over to over 14 volts um, basically that switches on your 12 volt system you won't get any of your lights or anything working without that that switches it off um, this uh, is your water tank levels so the top one um, top one will be your fresh water and then the bottom one here will be your waste water. So you're pressing these to give an indication on, on, on what level your water is at. Um, it didn't needle didn't move, so um, we've we've we drained those down as indicated when we when we showed you the controls for the water. That switches your water pump on. Uh, you won't get any water through your taps unless that is switched on. <coughs> and when you first put the water into the vehicle, you'll need to switch on your hot and cold tap. On, on here and in the bathroom and wait until you get a pure flow of water coming out of your tap um, because basically what you're doing is you're pumping the uh, water that's in the tank that I showed you outside through the boiler through all the pipes and then eventually it'll come out of your out of your tap so it's called purging the system you need to switch your pump on wait until you get a pure flow of water coming out of there and then you can switch on your hot water because otherwise you're just heating thin air um, so that's how the water system works that just indicates we're plugged in this uh, is the optional Wi-Fi system that um, customers uh, asked us to fit um, <clears throat> so the way that works is on the back of there um, you pull up like a like an old mobile phone you pull off that back panel uh, and that reveals the battery you take the battery out and then underneath that is where the sim card is located so sim card of your choice Um, light, there's light switches dotted around the vehicle uh, in various places um, but there, there's the main bank as you enter the vehicle 
Okay, so moving on along then, we have the microwave that we fitted for you. That's located just there. Your fridge controls. Um, basically, um, switch the fridge on. Okay, so it'll run on three power sources, which you can select, or you can have the fridge select the uh, power most relevant power source itself. So, we've either got mains electric, selected manually, Gas, obviously you need your gas switched on and you need to be plugged into mains to get mains. 12 volt, now it's telling us that we haven't got 12 volt because, because uh, the engine isn't running. So what that does is it takes power from the engine alternator when you're traveling uh, to keep the fridge cool when you're traveling. It won't get cold on that, it just simply maintains the temperature that you've got cold either on gas or electric uh, at home or on site before you've set off. Then you've got A for automatic, so it'll automatically select the most relevant power source. So it'll look for electric first, then gas, then it'll look for uh, the 12 volt. It's good that if you, um, it, I would just leave it on automatic because that means that you can just set off. If you run out of gas, it'll switch over to electric, vice versa. If your uh, electric supply fails, then it'll switch over to gas. This is your temperature control. Um, if it's a really hot day like today, you want the fridge to be working harder. So you want it in the upper settings. If it's a really cold day uh, in winter, then you just you just need it in the lower settings. Otherwise, it'll freeze up. Uh, the fridge you don't want the fridge working too hard. It'll just it'll just freeze everything inside. Um, if you're going to leave the fridge uh, for any length of time. Um, if you're going to leave the motor on laid up for any length of time, don't don't leave the the fridge door shut because you'll get stagnant air building up and you'll get um, a nasty smell in the fridge. Um, so yeah, just leave the door ajar if you're going to uh, not be using it. So switch the fridge off. Just keep your finger on that button. So um, don't really need to go into any detail on this. You've got a hot three burner hob with ignition just there. Um, oven underneath it. Uh, it's an oven and grill, so that way for the oven, that way for the grill, igniter there. Okay, so working on towards the bathroom, um, the toilet uh, flush is just above. So, right, the way the way that you would use this then is, um, so obviously lift the lid. This handle here is directly attached to that cassette that's, which I showed you outside. And if you move this across, it's opening and closing that blade which I showed you, which is on top of the toilet cassette, the, the waste cassette. So um, come to it, open it up, use the toilet, and then the flush button is just there. Um, and then it will flush all around. Um, and then make sure you close this before you set off, otherwise you'll have the toilet waste swishing around in the bowl, which uh, obviously you don't want. Uh, that is an indication to tell you when the cassette is full. Um, but you can actually see down into the cassette. It's it'll be uh, the blue liquid. You can actually see it um, when you open up that valve. Okay, so working on just uh, around to the back. <clears throat> um, that's the main circuit breaker. So like a domestic circuit breaker at home, uh, if there's a main short, uh, if there's an appliance that's faulty or the main shorts out, they'll trip down to the bottom. So like that. Uh, and then obviously you won't get it. You won't have any mains coming into the vehicle. There is a little test button there You can press that to make sure uh, So you press that test button at the top and that flicks down to make sure that you've got mains coming into your vehicle That tube there is designed to have holes in it. It's for the heating. So you've got heating running around your uh, uh, If you've got clothes hanging in there, it just keeps those uh, from, from being dry and humid so if you lift the bed up, you do have access to the storage, which is in here. Um, we the the, the televisions that you gave us, we, we haven't fitted them because we didn't know which way around you wanted them, but we can fit those tomorrow when uh, when you're here. And they, they just they just screw on really easily. Uh, so coming to the end of the video, then on the control side of things, um, final one here. You've got a heated wastewater tank uh, in really cold conditions. Um, if you don't want the uh, wastewater which is exposed underneath to freeze and damage the tank you switch that on it's really only for really cold conditions uh, above that we've got the heating controls so to switch that on you press this dial in in the middle 
and then you're turning this wheel to scroll through your controls okay so I'll work my way along the top dial here okay so we've got this flashing here that's your temperature control for the vehicle so you select whichever temperature you want uh, so normally obviously not on a hot day like today but 22 is room temperature and then to select that you just press the button in the middle to come out of any of the menus you press this back button uh, I'm going to turn that off because I don't want the heating coming on particularly on a day like today next one along if you scroll round is your water temperature okay so uh, normally it's off um, eco is 40 degrees water um, next one along is hot which is 60 degrees water uh, boost which will take preference of the fuel from the heating of the van and allocate it to the heating of the water so uh, you won't get any heating of the van on when it's in boost mode if i were you i'd just leave it on hot uh, and then you can mix cool with it and then you've got a lot of warm water I'll turn that off again and then the next one along is your fuel selection so gas only mix of gas and one kilowatt electric mix of gas and two kilowatt electric electric only on one kilowatt electric only on two kilowatts the reason for that is if you're on a site which is only got low ampage so a small site with very low ampage electricity you want it on the one kilowatt or preferably just gas you can just set this to vent if you want to if it's if there's no heating on you can just blow air around the vehicle so that's your fan setting that's your timer setting so you can set it to come on at a certain time go off at a certain time and that sets your clock and then there's a settings menu there, but you shouldn't really need to worry too much about that. Uh, but there, there is an instruction manual, separate instruction manual for all of that. This is indicating that we're plugged into mains electric. To switch it off, again, press on the middle and wait for it to say off. There we go. So that concludes the video. Um, I think I've covered all the main controls. If you've got any further questions, I'm happy to answer those on, on the day uh, that you collect tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to post this now, but if you've got any questions in the meantime, I'm, I'm in till five today if, uh, if you've got any pressing questions. But if not, we'll uh, look forward to seeing you when you collect your new motorhome.